Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Daniel Umstead, the host of the RNG Radio Show. I am really excited. Uh, my next guest on the RNG Radio Show is none other than Mike Morowski. Now, Mike Morowski is a 30-plus year real estate uh, investment professional who's controlled over $285 million in real estate transactions and syndications and has a strong personal resilience and a deep desire to help others just live an extraordinary life through uh, strategic uh, real estate investments. Uh, over his career, Michael has trained and coached hundreds of real estate investors to fulfill their financial dreams and live an extraordinary life. And I get the opportunity today to interview him. So ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce to the RNG Radio Show, Mike Morosky. Mike, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me on, Daniel. And you know, it's actually my honor to be on your show. So... <laughs> Well, we're going to keep going back and forth, but I mean, uh, until I get to 285 million in transactions, then, uh, you know, <laughs> I'll be able to share more of the honor. But uh, we're here today to talk about you. We're here today to talk about how you've been helping others. Um, if folks don't know already, the Exit Plan book is a great book uh, mm -hmm. for folks to dive into, and it's free. Uh, you know, I, I, I love mentioning free stuff, so... Uh, I want to start with the main thing. Mike, tell us about yourself and what actually got you into real estate in the first place. Yeah, interesting, right? Um, you know, I didn't grow up in a family that uh, was entrepreneurial or real estate or anything like that. And just a quick story, you know, I was eight years old sitting on the side of a swimming pool. We were on family vacation and I we were at this resort. And I remember asking my dad, what's with all the doors in the rooms? And I remember him in his infinite wisdom, not knowing a lot, saying, well, people come and they stay here and they pay the owner money. And, and I remember those words thinking, damn, I want to be the owner. You know, I want to be the guy that's getting paid the money. And uh, I think that's when the bug got me early on. I was, you know, I had a construction company. I was very successful in the construction business. But Daniel, you know, being an entrepreneur, that you're still handling uh, the hiring, the firing, the marketing, the sales, the ordering, the scheduling, the bookkeeping. Uh, and I was still in the field banging nails. And I woke up one morning, looked at my wife and said, I'm done. I, I just can't do this anymore. And That's so, yeah, um, I, I took, uh, I sold the company. I was fortunate. I had somebody knocking on my door to buy the company. So I sold the company, took a year off. And when I took that time off, I decided to, um, you know, uh, house hack a couple of houses. Now, um, oh, awesome. I, I had, um, uh, I listened to Jim Rohn, uh, Jim Rohn, great motivational speaker, thought leader. And he said something very critical that I always hung on to. And that was success leaves clues. Uh, if you follow somebody successful, you can shorten your learning curve. You can uh, grow faster, whether the success is good or there were stumbles in that person's life. And I've met this real estate agent along the way who was extremely successful. And I went to him and said, hey, you know, I'd like to go into real estate. And he said, I think you'd be great at it. Uh, so he encouraged me to go in, uh, get my license, which I did. And I went to him and I said, hey, Todd, would you teach me, you know, could, could I come and shadow your team and, and, you know, see the, the things that I need to learn to do real estate? And he said, no, I'm going to do one better than that. I'm going to make you a cassette tape. And he did. He made me this 40 minute cassette tape that I listened to all day long, every day for probably six months. I think I wore it out, but I wanted it to become part of who I was, my DNA in, in being ingrained in me. And, and that's what I did. And I went in the real estate business. My first nine months in the business, I sold 78 houses. I was wow. Remax Rookie of the Year. I went on to build a team selling 125 homes a year. Um, and um, we did that for about 12 years consecutively. Awesome, awesome. And I wanna point out a cassette tape. So for those listening, especially you young folks You're gonna out there. date me now, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I, I'm, I'm the first. I'm the first. I was in the transition of cassette tapes to CD. So for those that don't know, a cassette tape is a type of CD uh, device that we would be listening to. So and probably 
I think my son doesn't even know what a CD is. So, uh, but go into the transactions. So your first year, you said 78 transactions. Following year is 125. What kept your drive going? Like what kept the more going? You, you know, a, a real estate agent, even for 10 homes, you know, the average is usually between one to two on a monthly basis, especially somebody who's maybe doing it part-time, but what kept you going even past the 40, past the 50, and then, you know, almost doubling the number the following year? Yeah, you know, um, I, I've always had this drive. I got this work ethic uh, from my dad growing up, and um, and it's about work ethic for me, um, and, and I loved what I was doing, and they say, you know, if you love what you're doing, the money will follow and, and, um, and I just have always, always believed that, but I loved engaging people. Um, I loved being the guy in the office, everybody hated on and talked about and said, Oh, look at him. You know, um, I, I loved being the guy that, that did that volume where, you know, at the end of the year, people shook their head, looked at me and said, you know, uh, can't duplicate it. <laughs> I love that. No, no, no. I, I love that. I love to be challenged. <laughs> no, and that's great. And you said, um, as far as like the mentorship piece, or just even more about you, where can folks uh, find more info about you and uh, get connected with you? Yeah, you know, um, first of all, if you hang out on social media, I, I'm on social media everywhere, any platform. And I'm always posting content, just little ideas and thoughts and, and, and things that will help your business grow. Um, but, you know, you can find me at mycoreintentions.com and um, send me an email. I love to network. I love to meet people. Great. Awesome. And uh, we touched on syndications uh, in your profile. If you can, uh, for the folks out here, they're probably brand new to real estate syndications. In your definition, what does that mean to you uh, when you're looking to work with somebody? And what is your ideal individual uh, that you want to work with when it does come to syndications? So here, here's what happened. So I did all that volume in real estate. And in 2005, mm -hmm. I saw that the market was starting to soften. Now, at this point, I didn't know what was going to happen or what was going on. I just, I just had this vision that the market was going to change. I had seven people working for me. We were, you know, a, a lot of paper pushers in the office, uh, runners, people uh, do, you know, a couple listing or a listing agent and a buyer's agent. So um, I, had a, I had building this team, but I saw the market was going to shift and I knew that the volume would go down. And if I was going to keep all these people busy, and I, I hate to be the guy of bad news. I don't want to tell anybody bad news. I don't want to have to fire anybody. I said, let's pivot, right? Pivot wasn't a word at that time. So, um, I, but I said to myself, I said, let's switch it up. Let's do something different. <clears throat> so when I was in the construction business, I did a lot of work for a syndicator and I understood the model. And here's what it is. You find a great real estate deal. You go raise private capital from individuals. You marry the two run it, operate it, build it out. And as long as everything goes well, you make money. So I syndicated my first deal in 2005. Uh, silly how I started to raise private capital. That's, a, that's another story. Uh, but what, what we did, what I did was I raised $18 million in 30 months and bought $60 million worth of real estate. It was 4,000 apartments at, in five different US markets at the time. I built a property management company managing 7,500 doors. And like I said, I did that in 30 months. Wow. So we're talking less than three years, you know, meeting, connected with people, uh, getting out there. You know, it, it's to some may seem like a lot and to others, it might seem like a little like, oh, you know, I, I'm able to do that within three years. And it's that financial freedom piece. Uh, I know that a reason why a lot of folks do get into syndication is to have that financial freedom. All right, Mike, I really appreciate all uh, the information in regards to syndication. What are you looking for as like an ideal investor to work with? Um, you know, you talked about you know, plateauing uh, in 30 months, uh, raising 18 million. As far as those ideal individuals that you're looking for, who are you looking for out in this industry to connect with for such deals? Uh, you know, I, I think that there's, there's different um, spaces 
that we play in, right? So am I looking, when you ask me about the ideal individual, is that, you know, the, my ideal coaching client? Is that the ideal partner, somebody I want? Ideal to partner, ideal partner. And I do want to touch on the coaching client because I know you have a few fantastic uh, coaching programs. But right. yeah, let's talk about the um, ideal partner for those who may be already accredited and yep. who are looking to do syndications. Okay. So, so I want a partner who is um, who, who complements my weakness. So I know what I'm... I know what I'm, it's the trials of living in the city and a fire engine going by. Oh, the benefits, full benefits. I'm with you, I'm right here in Philly. <laughs> I'll let you edit that out. So, um, so uh, what for me, the ideal individual is somebody who complements my weaknesses. And here's what I mean. One thing I always do with my coaching clients is I teach them when you're building relationships and you're putting together a, a team structuring a team to put together uh, syndications and to buy multifamily, figure out what you're good at. What's your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And build into your strengths, but go find team members to build into your weaknesses. Here, I'll give you an example. I am really good and I absolutely love building relationships with people. So I want to go out and I want to meet private investors. I want to meet uh, people that I can do business with that want to invest in my real estate deals. Um, but I'm not real good at the details, right? So I have a partner who's really good at the details. And she can, you know, like if I sit down to read a private placement memorandum, usually 40 or 50 pages long, right? By page three, I'm asleep. She can read the whole thing, come back and say, hey, you know, we're good, or this needs to be changed, or what do you think about this? Keeps the I's dotted and the T's crossed. So you have to find people that complement who you are and go build a strategic team to help you do that. Even if you're somebody who's never done a, a syndication in the past, you can go do it by putting together uh, strategic people that you meet to help build out that team. Love that, love that. And then uh, for the coaching client uh, side of things, who are you looking for? Because everybody can be coached, you know, doesn't matter the level that they're at, everybody can be coached. You know, LeBron James still uses a uh, uh, coach for these days, you know, even though he is considered one of the greatest. When you're seeking out that coaching client uh, to join one of your programs, who are you looking for? Yeah, that's a really great question. I want somebody who wants to be coached. Um, you know, I want somebody who, who wants to grow personally so that they grow professionally. My ideal client is somebody who um, knows that the investment that they make financially into their future will tenfold be repaid back to them. You know, my best coaching clients are people who I've partnered and deals with. And my best coaching clients are people who um, have been with me longer than, you know, six months or eight months. Um, they're the ones who have really grown. You know, one of my coaching clients, uh, we started working together. He was struggling getting a first deal closed. It was 46 units. I helped him carry that over the finish line. And within a year, he, he has 300 units under management, um, uh, two pieces of commercial real estate under redevelopment right now and about 50 acres of vacant land that they're gonna develop into 200 units of, of multifamily. So, you know, this is what I've, I, I've been able to help people get things across the finish line and get things done. And that's the power of, of you know, somebody else's experience. You mentioned LeBron James. Well, um, you know, Michael Jordan, do you remember Michael Jordan? Yes, uh, yes. He still has <laughs> He still has two coaches in his, um, uh, he still has two coaches in his life today. So um, he doesn't play basketball anymore. And these coaches aren't for basketball, but they're business and personal growth coaches. So, um, and that's because I know somebody really close to him that knows his inside, knows a lot of his inside stuff. So um Again, it's what do you want to get out of life and what are you going to do to get there? 
I love that. I love that. And can you uh, give us the website one more time as far as uh, where folks can uh, find more information about that, about the coaching programs? Uh, it's mycoreintentions.com. Um, and, you know, here's what I always tell people. The program, the program outlines, you know, there's there's three or four different coaching plans over there. But but let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the results that you as a individual are going to get. You know, I've been coached for 20 years. And as a direct result of being coached, my business has grown every year, 20% a year. I can directly correlate the business growth, the production growth, the team growth uh, it, it, to back to, I can tie it back to the coaches that I've had in my life. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, we've been talking about, you know, a lot of great things, you know, the uh, syndications, the money being raised, you know, you almost doubling uh, the number of homes uh, being sold. Uh, and, you know, for lack of a better word, we got to put this ugly hat on. What are some of the ugly side of things that you've seen in syndications or, you know, not so great things um, that people drudge through uh, when it does come to uh, real estate syndications and investments? Um, you, uh, be careful. I grew, uh, I grew that company in 30 months and I grew way too fast. I want people to walk away from, from this episode with, with a few key points. So, you know, one, the first one is, uh, don't scale your business too fast. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You don't have to beat somebody else. Um, didn't spend enough time stabilizing my deals. Right. I thought I had a team behind me that was building those out, that was working the business plan, and that wasn't happening. So I grew that real estate company really quick. 2008 rolled around, and it was like hitting a, a brick wall and a freight train at 200 miles an hour. Totally started to derail and um, unwind. And it was because we, were, um, we, we grew too fast, very unstable as a company. Thought I had a COO working uh, in my company that was able to get his arms around everything. And that wasn't the case. He came from an industry that he was really good at, but he wasn't that good in this industry. And a lot of that I take responsibility for uh, and say, you know, I didn't train him enough and I didn't teach him enough of what he needed to know. Hindsight's 2020, right? But uh, here, here's some key points. Don't grow too fast. Make sure you have enough capital to grow. I was under undercapitalized as a company. Make sure that you're not over leveraged. Um, I owned $60 million worth of real estate at 85% LTV, loan to value. I don't believe anybody should do that. I, I don't know who was worse, me for taking the money or the banks for giving it to me. But you should be 65 to 75% LTV uh, on your deals today whether it's residential or whether it's commercial. That's that layer of protection that'll keep it from turning upside down in a downturn in the market. Um, what happened was, Daniel, I grew that company, 2008 rolled around, the economy went uh, down the dumper, um, everything changed, uh, occupancies dropped, NOIs dropped. I found myself trying to figure out by 2010 how to mitigate this storm that we were in as a country. Matter of fact, I remember sitting at lunch in 2008 with my CFO and the news was on and, and I was watching the news and I said to him, uh, they were carrying boxes out of Lehman Brothers by the droves. People were just walking out carrying boxes. I said, man, we're screwed, aren't we? He goes, yeah, we're, we're in big trouble. And um, I didn't know the magnitude of that comment or that conversation until a few months later. Um, 2010, you know, really couldn't mitigate the storm anymore. Occupancies dropped, NOI dropped, the net operating income. Wasn't able to uh, pay my bills, much less pay my investor returns. Um, crafted a scheme to um, uh, be able to try and mitigate the storm. I thought, you know, this is a recession. Recessions last 17 or 18 months. Uh, they, uh, they rebound, there's a 10 to 12% correction in the marketplace, and that wasn't the case this time. This time, this was a seven or eight year correction, 
40% correction in the marketplace, pretty tough to weather that storm. <clears throat> so I, I started to move money. I had 38 different companies and I started to move money back and forth between companies. So I would take co money from profitable companies, put it into non-profitable companies. Um, my accountant and my attorney both said it was okay to do that, just leave a paper trail, which I did. Um, the problem was I didn't uh, tell my investors what I was doing. Uh, mm -hmm. Real estate space is a is a, uh, uh, a disclosure business. You need to tell people what you're doing in every step of the way. So when you raise capital from people, when you are dealing with their finances, their money, their life savings, retirement money, um, real estate holdings, assets, you need to tell them, be very transparent every step of the way. And I wasn't. So I moved money back and forth between companies. I didn't tell my investors and um, I wound up being charged on wire fraud and mail fraud charges for non-disclosure issues. I uh, got sentenced to 10 years in federal prison and in 2013 um, went to federal prison on that sentence, uh, pretty much losing everything in my life. Uh. And I mean, it's pretty much, of course, already written on the wall, you know, what, what could you have done um, prior to, as far as moving forward, because I know you're coaching clients. Um, I know you uh, are still a success, you know, despite what had happened in the past, you're still considered a success, you know, for what you're able to do even now, you know, a, a lot of the this stuff happens, you know, to folks, and it's not even, I would say, mismanagement of funds, but, you know, they get caught up, especially in times of the recession between 08 and 09, and, you know, they're trying to find those solutions, and some of those solutions might, you know, might not meet the level that they're supposed to be at. Um, one question is, if you could go back, um, what would you change? what would you change, you know, even not even so much, you know, not being in federal prison, but what would you change as far as uh, bettering others? So, so first, here's what I want to say is we can't be defined by our past. So I wouldn't change anything. I, I, I had, I've had 12 years of learning how things don't work. Um, and I want people to understand, even though I made some mistakes, um, even though, uh, some events that occurred <clears throat> that caused it to be worse than it should have been. Um, and I, I don't live in that past. I got to look forward. I think Daniel, there's so many people in our society today that are trapped in these mental prisons, which is a lot worse than being behind the wall. Like I was, um, it, you know, people are trapped in addiction. They're trapped in abuse. Uh, those addictions show up in the form of alcohol, drugs, gambling, uh, sex, pornography. Um, they, they, um, you know, they get trapped in these mental places and can't get out. Um, and, and it keeps them stuck. I just want people to know that you don't have to live that way. Um, the things that I would have changed, um, I, I would have built my team a little differently. Um, uh, and that had grown it so fast. I had a big payroll. I had a lot of people working for me. <clears throat> I grew too fast as a company, unstable, undercapitalized, over leveraged. <clears throat> I didn't listen to people around me when they were telling me they saw red flags. Um, I didn't pay attention. And I was put, you know, we, we put these blinders on, right? Trying to stay focused and move forward. Don't keep them so tight. Look have a little bit of peripheral vision coming in and pay attention to that. Um, so, you know, I say that, but I always feel also that we have these defining moments in our life. And so I'm in prison. I think my life's over. My wife divorces me. It wrecks me. Um, I, I, I think, how am I going to get through today, much less every day moving forward? Um, and, and that was the worst. That was the bottom. That was the worst it could ever get. Uh, the joke in prison was take his shoelaces because we think he's going to hurt himself. And, um, um, you know, I have this history of defeating the odds, right? Of doing more than, than the average. And um, I walk in the gym one day 
and, and here's what I want people to understand. I never flew private. I didn't have a big boat. I didn't buy a fancy house, no fancy cars. Um, I was the neighborhood baseball coach. I was home every night for dinner. Uh, I had a great marriage. My wife and I were best friends and I got ripped from that to live in a 12 by 12 room with three men I didn't know, nor did I like. Wondering what happened in my life. And, and um, I, got, I went from running marathons to being 35 pounds overweight. I hated myself. Um, I walk in the gym one day, just window shopping, not ready to buy anything yet, not picking up a weight, not gonna get on an exercise, piece of exercise equipment. This guy walks over to me and he goes, hey, look, don't let these people beat you. All they want to do is take everything from you you've ever known. They can take your business. They can take your real estate. They can take your money. They can destroy your family, which they've done all that to you. But don't let them beat who you are. They can't take what you're made of. They can't take who you are. Don't let your past define you. And I don't know, man, this switch flip. And, and I just went, you're right. And uh, he said, come to my class every day, start working out, start losing weight. You'll start to feel better. Um, you know, we all have choices, right? And, Absolutely. And, you know, and, and I said, okay, I'll take you up on it. I started going to the gym. I started working out. All of a sudden, my life starts changing. I start feeling better. I decided to go to college. Uh, I went to college for four years, got a bachelor's degree in theology. I wrote two books. One is Exit Plan, Your Complete Guide to Multifamily Investing and Why You Need an Exit Plan Before You Buy. Um, one's on property management. Go ahead, what? No, I was just breathing. Oh. There's like dust in there. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, I wrote an ethics course. D Daniel, I, I taught real estate investing, property management, and ethics in prison for six years. I was on an outreach program, went into the community. I told my story like 40 times to small business owners and local area college students. Um, met a professor from the University of Minnesota and he and I co-authored a paper together that we had published in the Business Journal of Ethics. It gets taught today at the collegiate level for forensic accounting and sales and marketing classes. Today, yep, today I'm back home. I'm in the coaching and training business. Um, I just was approved by the SEC to go back and be an issuer of securities, be a sponsor of deal. Um, and um, I'm, you know, my, I tell my story today because like I said, I don't want people to be defined by their past, move forward, understand you can go do it. Um, there's hope out there, just grab onto it. Um, and, um, you know, I want to make a difference in other people's lives. That Mike, that that's incredible. And this is, this is why I say it's an <laughs> honor having you on the show. I run into so many people, uh, me being a realtor, myself as well, I run into so many people who just quit. You know, they, they just stop, you know? They say after 10 calls, hey, I couldn't get anybody on the phone. They say, I just had three appointments, you know, nobody wants me um, to utilize them for their listing. And then they just stop. You've been to prison, you lost money. You know, it, it's having that conversation during lunch to say like, hey, we're in hot water. Well, how bad? Well, I'm about to find out. And going through all these obstacles, these hurdles and these jumps and being beaten down. I mean, the family is a big thing, you know, even for me personally. And you overcame that, you know, and I want folks to realize that you overcame that. And it was that pivot that you had mentioned that, you know, don't let them beat you. And I, I think uh, even more so adding on to that, and you had mentioned the mental prison, I think folks allow themselves to beat them where they don't even give themselves a chance. They have the potential, they have the forthright, they have all the resources and tools. Even now, you know, we're living in 2022 and you could pretty much Google anything. You can connect with anybody. We connected on Instagram and, you know, folks still find a way to find those excuses. But I, I want folks to listen to this. I, I want folks to look at this video. And then I want folks to go to mycoreintentions.com um, because I think initially just having that conversation with you is going to put them on a better pathway and a more structured pathway. So I really appreciate you coming on, just yeah. laying that out. So Throughout all that, you know, being now being, you know, SEC approved again, what do you see for yourself like in the next five to 10 years, Mike? 
Yeah, you know, um, uh, first, first and foremost is building relationships with my children. Um, broken, damaged. Um, you know, it's been a, it's it, it's a tough road to build trust again. You know, we um, we we gain this trust as individuals in people's lives, and we lose it by dumping a bucket out, right? And instantaneously, it's gone. Um, and um, to rebuild trust uh, is one teaspoon at a time to fill that bucket up again. And so. For me, it's about uh, the first thing is to rebuild relationships with my children, um, to um, to be um, a better friend, father, um, boyfriend, you know, um, and to um, be a a better all around person. That's first and foremost. So, how do I do that every day? I do that because of my daily disciplines, you know. I get up, I, I take care of myself physically, I take care of myself mentally, and I take care of myself emotionally and spiritually. You know, those spokes in our lives are really important, right? Um, and where do I see myself business-wise? I see myself working with a select few of uh, individuals, um, not hundreds, but a select few of in individuals on a coaching platform where they are gaining great knowledge, experience, and we're partnering on deals and back owning, you know, several thousand uh, multifamily units again. Love it. Absolutely love it. Well, uh, Mike, I want to thank you again uh, for coming on the RNG radio show. I know I mentioned the uh, website before, but can you give us that website one more time and uh, where folks can find you at on social media? Yeah, uh, anywhere on social media you hang out. So uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, find me, like me, love me, follow me, subscribe on my YouTube channel, and you'll get relevant content every day, uh, in, in, inspirational and informational. So um, I continually try to provide that for people. Um, uh, my website is mycoreintentions.com. And if you go to mycoreintentions.com forward slash free, I have some free stuff there. Uh, my exit plan book, uh, book on multifamily fundamentals. If you're a passive investor, um, 27 questions to vet a sponsor and a deal before you invest. Um, so there's great uh, content out there. And if you want to direct message me, it's Mike at mycoreintentions.com. And I love to connect with anybody. Uh, and I look forward to seeing somebody at an upcoming event and um, uh, working with you. So. Awesome. Awesome. Mike, thank you again for coming on the show and uh, we'll definitely be talking soon. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it.